Damn, I haven't done this in a minute. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jasmine. If you have no idea who I am, I'm a first generation low income undergraduate at Stanford University. And I made this channel to help other first generation low income students get better access to higher education through my college related videos. I know it's been a minute, but I know that college decisions also recently came out and I wanted to make a video about all the things that I hate about Stanford. And I wanted to start off with this video first because whether or not you got accepted or rejected, I feel like this video would be helpful. If you got rejected, which is like Stanford's acceptance rate is ridiculous, so the majority of the people who did apply to Stanford more often than not did get rejected then they can watch this video and feel better about themselves and, and they're gonna say like oh my god thank god i didn't go to that school or thank god i didn't get accepted there um and if you did get accepted then you might also have other options that you're picking between other colleges that you're picking between and i'm hoping that this video will be informative and letting you know what life is like at stanford and knowing that this place is not perfect and knowing that this institution is very problematic and it's not the perfect school and you're never going to find a perfect university you just have to find a university that best fits you and your interests and for me i am very very privileged to come to stanford and i want to preface with that i love this school i would not want to go to any other school this was my dream school since the start and i really really do appreciate and am grateful to be a stanford student but this is not the perfect school and there's a lot of things wrong with this university. And I feel like on Stanford YouTube specifically, other college YouTubers might be talking about certain things that are not necessarily specific to the fly experience. And I wanted to create this video that is specific to the fly experience and how I've approached certain problems and faced certain problems at the school as a fly student. So I'm gonna be listing 10 reasons, starting from the smaller ones up to the much bigger ones. And one of the first things that I thought of when I was thinking of a list of reasons why I hate the school is that it's huge. It's ridiculously huge. It's unnecessarily huge. It takes up so much land and so much space, which could be like a bigger like environmental issue and like gentrification issue. But it's just so inconvenient. Like I have to bike and everyone has to have a bike. Like if you don't have a bike, you have to have a scooter, you have to have a skateboard or something that has wheels on it because walking on this campus is gonna be impossible. I know some people do it, some people enjoy it, but I personally hate walking. I'd rather want to get to point A to point B a lot faster. And usually on this campus, point A and point B are pretty far from each other because this campus is just that huge. There are dorms that are like all the way across campus. Um, I have a friend right now who's on the other side of the campus and it's literally like a 10 minute drive. I have to drive to her to see her. And like we're on the same land still and it's just so inconvenient because I live on the far east side of campus and one of my favorite places to eat is all the way in west campus and sometimes I really want to go but it's so far. I know that might be like very different because everything is online now but if you do come to Stanford then at one point you're probably going to be on campus and you're just going to have to get used to how big this is because I know that newly admitted students often come visit the school before they decide whether or not they want to commit and they get lost and I got lost and I still sometimes get lost because this campus is just that big. If you think I'm exaggerating, I think it's about 8100 acres and that's like the size of Disneyland like multiple times, like a hundred times. Like. I'm not even kidding. Think about Disneyland and then think about that a hundred times. And that's how big the Stanford campus is. And it's just ridiculous. So everything is really far and you have to have a bike. And as a low income student, sometimes bikes can be expensive, especially if you want to invest in a bike. A lot of my fly friends ended up getting like Walmart bikes or bikes off eBay or secondhand bikes. And they weren't like really good quality bikes and um, they broke down easily. So now they have to buy another bike and that's another few hundred dollars that they have to invest into trying to like commute around campus and stuff and that can be like kind of burdensome especially if you're low income and the second thing that i want to mention is the possibility of bike theft and apparently that's like a big thing here i've had fly friends who've had their bike stolen i've had a few fly friends who had their bikes stolen multiple times so they've had to have to buy multiple bikes and 
that's just like it sucks like like being so dependent on a bicycle or on like some type of like transportation thing and then like also having the possibility of that being stolen from you and you having to buy another one I just think that sucks and like I really hate that that I have to live with that and I can't just be like in a very concise university where I can just walk to class and like I don't have to worry about any of those things but because the campus is so big then you do have to worry about those things and I hate that and the third thing that I hate is the fact that this is a bubble so because the campus is so big it has a lot of things that you need it has a post office it has food courts it has different like dining halls i think we have like nine different dining halls we have pools and we have a lot of things that are available to you like for you to use and for students to use and that's a good thing but it's also a bad thing because you have so many things in like one area then you don't really have a reason to go out so it's kind of easy to just get lost and like stay here like always and like if you really really don't need to go out then you can definitely survive just being on Stanford camp on Stanford's campus but that could be a bad thing because then you're like just always here and that could kind of like be bad for your mental health I think it's kind of like it's weird it's like very utopian it's so utopian that it's like creepy almost um, because you feel like you're like really locked in you're just like always in the same area all the time so that it can be kind of infuriating and kind of like suffocating in a way getting more into like the academic like part of Stafford it's kind of hard to say much about it because I only had a few quarters that were in person and most of my quarters have been online now but I do know that when I was in person and sometimes like currently as well a lot of the courses are not necessarily fly friendly so they require you to buy textbooks they require you to buy access codes they require you to buy like lab coats and like other expenses and i have a whole video on like unexpected expenses that i had to make while in college that i really didn't think that i had to make like i had to like pay like 75 dollars to like do my own homework or something it was like what like why would i have to why like a lot of the students here are very very wealthy so when professors kind of like require you to make these purchases i don't think that they realize like how difficult it is for fly students to keep up with these purchases and like yes it's only like a five dollar book that you're requiring me to buy but you're also requiring me to buy six of these books and like six different books um and like that's just like an expense i'd rather not make that can also be put applicable to other universities but I've noticed that at Stanford that not all courses are fly friendly and that's just something to be aware of and something that I found to hate once I've like started enrolling in classes because it's inconvenient and I hate it. And now like we're going into the academic part so I feel like because it's Stanford a lot of the expectations are like really high academically and I've also realized that this is kind of more so on like among the students than it is within the professors. Some professors are definitely like, oh, you should know this by now, this is common knowledge and it's like like the most complicated thing ever in the world and like I come from an underfunded public school, like I did not have AP Chemistry or AP Bio or any of the ones that you guys are like, it's kind of like standard that everyone took, like a lot of people and a lot of professors assume that Oh, because you're at Stanford that means that you took like this super intensive course in high school or like whatever and they kind of expect you to have this background knowledge or like this experience with rigor and it like sucks for fly students because it's like I don't have that academic experience and I'm trying to like keep up with um, these classes constantly because they have these high expectations that like oh you're a Stanford student you got it like oh you know this information already and it's like what like I don't <laughs> I I don't know where these assumptions are coming from but I don't know this thing and like I like I said a lot of it is also kind of among the students where it's like oh yeah like well everybody knows this and it's like no and like sometimes there's another thing that I wanted to talk about that like the students here are not necessarily competitive I've never had anyone like be outwardly like mean or like um say that they're not going to help me with my homework but also i find myself asking questions a lot and then sometimes when i'm talking to a peer and they like hear me out with my question then they kind of like give me this look and it's a little microaggression of it's like oh like you don't know this or like oh like I don't know it's like this kind of judgmental look and I've had it happen to me multiple times which is the reason why I'm mentioning it in this video 
because some students are just like really really up there and like academically like they've had a boarding school education and like they like this is easy to them like these intro courses is like they were born with this knowledge and when they encounter someone who is not at that level she kind of gets like this sense of judgment of other students that are like oh you don't know this like it's not necessarily stuck up it's not competitive it's just very very small but it's also very annoying and like i think that's specific to fly students who like don't have that same academic background because some other students they like have some kind of knowledge on that because their high schools like did offer those courses or did offer that knowledge or did offer certain programs that other underfunded public schools don't so like there is an advantage to certain students or for certain students in certain classes i'm not saying it's every class i'm not saying that it's every student but it does exist and i feel like that might either be specifically a Stanford thing or that could also be like within like the general elite institution thing um, because you're always going to face people like that at a predominantly white institution. The seventh thing that I want to talk about is microaggressions like I mentioned before but this time with professors. I've had a lot of instances and a lot of conflicts with some professors who think that it's okay to microaggress their students especially either their racially marginalized students, their gender marginalized students or any marginalized groups and especially for our students, these professors just like think they are the most important person in the world and like anything that you ask of them is an insult and that like sucks. Like there's some professors that are really like that. And like I want to include these stories because um, I want to make it credible that I do like, like these things happen and I had a friend who like she asked for a deadline extension um, because you know she was having some trouble and like she just like really needed extra time to finish the assignment and the professor was really really rude to her and like saying that oh this is like how dare you ask for an extension this is very bold of you to ask for an extension and some professors are just not accommodating um to their students and that doesn't necessarily have to be like fly students but also like students with adhd or students um with learning disabilities or other disabilities that like make learning difficult and they just have to have more time like processing information they have to like they just need certain accommodations like longer test times or something like that and some professors are just like very like nonchalant and they don't care like it's just like oh like everyone else is given the same assignment and everyone else like has the same deadline so why should you be given special treatment and like that sucks, like I hate that. Like, I'm not sure if that's Stanford specific, but that definitely happens at Stanford. The eighth thing is that we've had notorious things happen within like the administrative staff. And I'm gonna say that like, I'm gonna be very careful with what I'm saying, <laughs> but um, some professors have been inconsiderate of certain things that they say. Like, that's just not okay at all. And like, why at like her adult age is she doing this thing? And like, that's something that's like, unfortunately not the first time that that happened or that level of disrespect that those professors have done at this university. Um, there are definitely other instances of other things that other professors have done. And that's just like not okay. And like, I really hate that about Stanford that um, especially like tenured professors get really comfortable and like start saying things that they really shouldn't be saying and being disrespectful in ways that are like very inconsiderate of their students, especially their disadvantaged students. And some departments are just notorious for that. The professor that I was talking about still has her job and Stanford just doesn't do anything about it. And um, it makes me really angry because like it's just not fair at all systemically and it's like just shows the school like just continues to be complicit and uphold certain concepts that sh they shouldn't be upholding along with the fact that like certain professors are notorious certain departments are notorious as well for example i walked in thinking i was going to be a chemistry major and the, chem <laughs> the chemistry department really crushed me like it really just ruined my life in the worst ways possible. Um, it discouraged me from pursuing chemistry. And I think that the logic behind that is that like they make the intro course really, really hard so that um, if you're taking chem, like for example, because you want to be a doctor, then they want to weed out 
the certain students who only want to be doctors like for the money or something like they just they want really good chemistry majors like if you're a chemistry major that's because you're really good at it like you can't just like pass certain departments but if that makes sense like they're trying to weed out all the other regular students because they want only the best of the best in that department and in order to do that they have to make these courses extremely hard ridiculously hard and a lot of those times those like um, requirements that these courses have are very unfair especially to fly students I know the chem department has ruined a lot of like aspiring pre-med people and that like kind of sucks like a lot <laughs> um, and I know it ruined it for me I, I wasn't pre-med but I did want to like study chemistry but not anymore um, because of that department and because of how horrible it is number nine Stanford wrestling I'm gonna just go straight into <laughs> I'm gonna just go straight into reason 10 because I don't need to elaborate for Stanford wrestling. I'm kidding. If anyone from the wrestling team watches this video, it's satire, okay? Chill. I'm kidding. Um, I'm just gonna say that certain students live in their own world and you just have to get used to that if you go to like a predominantly white institution you're gonna be meeting a lot of different kinds of students with completely different mentalities and mindsets and motivations and goals that are probably very different from what you know and what you value you're just not gonna meet the best of the best people at Stanford and I want to make that very clear especially for students who didn't get accepted into Stanford I want you to know that the people who did get accepted, not hating on them, but everyone has this notion that Stanford is like the top school and like only the best of the best get into like schools like these. And that's just, that's just not true. Like it's not, like it's really not. <laughs> I think that there's about three ways you can get into Stanford. You're really, really smart, which is the one that everyone thinks. You're an athlete, and all athletes are really smart. I'm not saying that those are mutually exclusive, but that's that's fine. Or you're really rich. And I think people underestimate the amount of money that is circulated within these elite institutions. So that's one thing I hate about Stanford, Stanford admissions specifically. Um, I also hate like the general college admissions process, so that's not necessarily specific to Stanford. I hate that not everyone at Stanford is the genius that you expect them to be. And they have different upbringings, and you just kind of have to prepare yourself for that if you decide to come to this university, because I, I really didn't expect that. Now, the final reason why I hate Stanford is because it is a multi-billion dollar institution because this school is filthy rich it is disgustingly rich it is beyond my scope of imagination rich and that could be a good thing but it's also a really bad thing because Stafford just does not care about like where it allocates its money to and they really don't care about their workers for example we have a whole like student group that is focused on holding Stafford accountable to paying their workers, paying their own employees, especially during the pandemic. Stafford did this horrible decision of like letting go a lot of Stafford workers. And this includes like the janitorial staff, the custodial staff, the dining hall staff, and like, you know, people whose lives depend on these paychecks. And they just let them go without warning, without checks, without insurance, without anything. And Stanford just like didn't care. It's like, oh, we're sorry. We're in the middle of a pandemic and we just don't have the money. It's like, how do you, how do you not have the money? You're a multi-billion dollar institution, billion dollar institution. I will take that to my grave that the way that Stanford allocates its money is ridiculous. It's infuriating. It really is because there's other things in other areas that they don't have a problem with investing their money in. Um, but they also like refuse to divest from fossil fuels. Stanford contributes to the gentrification that goes on in the Bay Area and that is a fact. Stanford likes to like pride itself in its diversity and it's like other things that it does and like having students from all around the world but the groups that like are 
at this university, like the student groups and like the communities are really formed by the students and the students like have to fight for like their groups to stay groups. I know for the fly office specifically, the director had to fight for a really long time to have that space open for fly students and like they have like this cute little room that they have where like fly students can go, ask questions, hang out or like build community. That was back when everything was in person. They really had to fight Stanford in like keeping that room open and like funding the um, certain scholarships specifically for fly students like the opportunity fund or something like that like a lot of what we have now is through students pushing the university to do these things and i think i hate that about stanford that they don't do these things um deliberately the student body is definitely liberal whenever you're picking colleges like you have certain colleges that are known to be conservative, nor known to be super liberal or super not liberal or like very diverse. Um, and Stanford is known to be one of those liberal student bodies, but that's what it is. It's a liberal student body and it's not necessarily the university because the university likes to cater to certain populations and certain groups because they don't want to like hurt or offend their donors and they don't want to hurt their, do their donation revenue and they care more about the money than they do about real issues like the students or the workers or any of the other departments that need funding and a lot of departments are underfunded. For example, the African and African American Studies Department just got like departmentalized and like it's now officially a, a department and like that was through a lot of pressures that student groups and like other like staff have to do and pressure Stanford to like have that funding available for this department and like really push the institution to make these decisions. On the institutional administrative level, it's not great. And it's gonna seep into other parts of your college experience, um, especially if you're a fly student or any type of marginalized student, you're gonna notice it that the funding that Stafford allocates to certain areas is not equal throughout. And that's just part of the systemic inequalities that Stanford upholds. So I wanted to end up on that note um, because that's like definitely a really big reason why Stanford and also other institutions, if you're deciding between other schools like Harvard or Yale, or like these really big um, schools, a lot of times that's like what happens at these universities. And I didn't really know that. I didn't really prepare myself for that, um, but that's what happens and like it just needs to be talked about but one piece of advice that I do have if you're trying to compare you know Stanford with other universities try to look at the way that you, these universities responded to the COVID like pandemic and how they switched to online learning how they accommodated their students how they didn't accommodate their students and this university is just not perfect and I want to emphasize that I am also super grateful to come here I wouldn't want to go to anywhere else but I have to acknowledge that this university is like not the best. If this was your dream school and you didn't get accepted, then think of it as a good thing that now you know that Stanford's not this beautiful like paradise that you thought it would be. And if you did get accepted and you're deciding between other schools, I also recommend looking at like other YouTubers from other universities who like describe the things that they dislike about their universities. Um, so that you have like kind of an equal view like what other universities are really like but also I'm gonna try to make a video on stuff that I love about Stanford and that is a really big list I think if you got accepted to Stanford and you already committed to Stanford I hope this serves as a list of like things that you should prepare for and things that you should expect when you're coming here because some things like just kind of caught me off guard and I want to let you know that that's the reality here um, at this university specifically and I just really hope this video was helpful. Please let me know down in the comments below. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Follow us on Instagram at First Gen First or on Twitter, First Gen First One, or send us an email at info at Thank you, bye.